this is Those Boys, episode 29. Uh, cameras are recording all three. Mike's recording all two. And we have two TikTok cameras live going. <clears throat> what has happened to us? Action. Oh! Um, it's loud, dude. We're going to get started with the glasses, though. We're going we're gonna to take it off the glasses. What's up, Those Boys fans? My name is Nathan. I am Zach. We are the, those boys. Those boys who um, were raised in the Christian Church of Northern California, who decided to start a podcast because we made it out alive. Yes, not everyone does. Not everyone does. And so here on Those Boys, we talk about religious trauma. Dun dun dun. Uh, and if you're uh, watching right now on YouTube, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Seriously. Um, because you're seeing that I'm wearing some special glasses. We had those glasses back when we did blouse, right? Isn't that where they started? These are the blouse glasses. The blouse glasses, yeah. On the same uh, YouTube, you can search up the three-part documentary series that was made by Live Nation on us. Yeah. And uh, they we used these glasses in a lot of our blouse videos. That was such an awkward situation we had with Love Nation. You know, I can't see. I remember even wearing these for certain photo shoots yeah. and like music videos and being like, I can't see shit. Yeah. I remember our graphic designer at the time would always tell me, don't worry, you don't have to see. <laughs> it's like, you look good. You don't have to see. Oh, and then God. we would sing that Beyonce song. Pretty hurts. What is it? Pretty hurts. Turn the lights on. Yeah. And this is a We'll show off some more of props. This is some more religious trauma. I'm not going to say their name, but somebody from the old church days, they started their own business making these tiny little uh, bows. And I ran into them at the farmer's market. Hmm. I'm trying to put my head to who that is. Don't worry about it. Okay. And then um, Hodel Needle. Hodel Needle. This is for Bitcoin. Have you been following crypto anymore? Is that even a thing? Um, yeah, it's just, it's lingering. 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 We do know that, uh, and we don't have to speak too much on it, but there is somebody in our family very close to us. We actually talk about them a lot on this podcast who's making a lot of money in crypto right now. Who's <laughs> like, oh, you did, somebody did something right during the pandemic. Um, there's multiple people that could be. <laughs> I'm trying to piece together who you're talking about. Like that could be this person, uh, this person, or this person. A lot of people made crypto their wealth in 2020. Yeah, I know, but somebody that texts us all the time who keeps telling us about how much money they're making. I'm like, yeah, good for you. Gotcha. Um, anyways, I think uh, we finished the five-part series. We did. Um, which, mind you, also, one thing I want to point out is uh, my. I know that my mic sounds a little weird. We've had a couple friends hit us up. And let us know some things I've noticed. And I know that with like the reflection of my mic, even the way it sounds in my head, it's almost like I can hear you mm. from your mic. And I think that unless I talk really close into it, um, it gets that like room sound yeah, any, really any, anytime, easily. Anytime you hit a certain desk for it. Because right, your voice doesn't here. really do that as much. But I've realized it's because, dude, my voice goes all the way to the garage. Yeah. Your voice bounces right off that wall and right back into mine. So I know that if you're watching this right now, you want to keep seeing the beautiful face of mine. I'm going to have to keep the mic here and we're going to figure this out more and more and you'll, you'll get the bottom of my face. <laughs> we're going to get some weighted soundproof. The more and more we, we go. I know that uh, we were talking about a lot of religious trauma this week about what we'd want to talk about and we were about to talk about some stuff and then we decided, nah. Well, we did the five-part series to keep us a little organized because we haven't talked about that much religious trauma For in ourselves. consistent podcasts and it was a, a really honestly amazing experience at least for me to really categorize how do I feel about prayer how do I feel about yeah. worship how do I feel about these mission trips yeah, and then pastors. have to go back in I haven't thought about those uh, youth mission trips in a long time and that made yeah. me readjust and like rethink and I think that's kind of the whole idea part of this podcast is is what we're learning as we're going and I think it would be great to do more series in the future um, to keep us organized yeah. and categorized I also think that people really have responded then when I say people like uh, just the ones that have hit us up on the yeah. side who have been like really engaged with this series um, and have connected with it. And so thank you for watching and following along. And um, if you're new to the cast and you're just jumping into it because you've heard about it or you were involved in the local churches of this area, 
uh, thanks for being here. Don't be afraid to hit us up. Yeah. Um, we'd love to know who you are and we'd love to get your uh, feedback and all that jazz. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, why don't we jump into some stuff? Uh, we do have, we like to call these episodes shooting the shit and we do have a new uh, segment uh, back in studio, live here in studio. We don't have her on a camera or a mic because we're using two of our phones to do live TikTok. So if you have TikTok, go ahead yeah. and hop on live. But if you're watching this on YouTube, you missed it. <laughs> yeah, you already missed it. Uh, but Chantel, ladies and gentlemen, Seabug Design is here live back in studio. Back again. She's been gone for the last two weeks. Yeah, she's like on vacation. Partying in like the Bahamas. She's super rich. You know what I know I want to point out too? We told each other when we invited some, they'd go off and vacation on yeah. our dime on our time dude on those boys money oh, well, yo, thanks for the paycheck Woo. it's like where off are you goes. Mallorca where's that it's yeah. like off the coast of Spain yeah have you never been anywhere just kidding we know that she didn't go to Spain <laughs> <laughs> no we're kidding she, she actually uh, had to go take care of her dog yeah for what I in you, Africa I thought you took care of her dog wait I took care of your dog that's right wait oh, Africa did it feel like you were on a savannah I, I, I had this pain in my left shoulder Oh, God. Okay, you know what? This is supposed to be a joke, right? Yeah. Oh, Zach. It's good, dude. I'm so sorry. Thanks, man. Let's, uh, let's just move right along let's here. Let's move right along. Let's move right along. Uh, Chantel, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here, I think uh, the website's almost done, and it's looking mighty fun, and I think we're going to have something to share very soon. Very soon. Uh, I just love it. I love, you know, we love when a plan works out. I can't wait to get on some of that merch life, baby. I know. And I think that uh, if you're wondering what the proceeds of our merch will go, probably to fund Chantel's trips to Spain. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Hopefully I'll be on that plane and we're going to do some nude bead, beach shoots. Nude bead shoots. Nude yeah. beach shoots. We know and, Zach uh, would do it. we're going to sell beady. a calendar with those boys for Jesus. Oh. And it's going to be me naked on the beach. Okay. But she's going to take all the pictures and do all the graphic design. It's going to be fabulous for me and my orca. You can come. <laughs> Honestly, I can't wait. It's going to be like a calendar. A calendar? Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, like a nude calendar, yeah. But like, a, like a bathing suit calendar. You said like a nude bead calendar. A nude beach. I'm oh. sorry, I have a stuffy nose. Oh, I love the bead. You know what? If it's not beads, it's beach. Why don't we just segue then? Why are you mispronouncing words? What's wrong with your nose? No, nah, dude, I got really sick on like Monday. Um, and then. Do you uh, have what my fiance has? No, your fiance had COVID. <gasps> but, but 18, not 19. And, I, did, I, and I didn't get it. Because I drink elderberry every day. That's not true. <laughs> yes, it is. That's not true. I drink elderberry every day and you can, I can stand by that <laughs> and other things. But I, I mean, I packed on like, I drank probably four electrolyte tabs, six shots of elderberry. We, I would make fresh ginger, orange and lemon smoothies every day. And I would make her drink and she'd be like, it's so cold. And I'd be like, <laughs> you drink. And she'd be like, you're such a mean nurse. And I'd be like, no, you're in the family. Mm. You're in the family, family now. Family now, yes. Tough love. You gotta is be still tough. Love. Yeah, and it's still loving. Drink. Yeah, the drink. Drinker. Drink the Kool Aid. You didn't get COVID. Put it down your gullet. Yeah, no. What? What? Kool Aid. Kool Aid. Nobody said anything about any Kool Aid. Oh, okay. No, yeah. I, uh, um, you got sick. I got sick. Like, I got pretty sick. And uh, it wasn't COVID, which is really weird. <laughs> that's crazy. There's other things out there. What else do you get sick with these days? I don't know. And what sucks, dude, is I had COVID like legit four weeks prior. I remember. And COVID, like the actual like recovery of COVID took about like two weeks. So I only had about like two mm. weeks of healthiness. Started getting sick again. And it wasn't even the sinuses. It was like legit flu for mm. like three days, fully bedridden. And then my sinuses just kind of stayed stuffed. And I just always get sinus infections. And so I'm starting to develop one, but I'm taking care of it. I really don't want it to get inflamed. And so... Yeah. I'm open like tomorrow, Tuesday. How much water are, and this is also why we're drinking tea. Uh, now it's freezing. Tea, now it's cold tea. We, it's like Ice tea. 30 minutes ago, but. Um, but it's also freezing in here, but it's okay. I'm curious though. Uh, it was, uh, it's been very cold. It's cold out here right now. And um, you recently spent some time out in the no, cold, the, the, um, which is why I think you got sick. Yeah. Um, I, I woke up Monday. No, I woke up on uh Sunday, not feeling so hot. I was really like nauseous. Um, and I just didn't look into, I didn't, I didn't really give in to that. Like, oh, I'm not feeling well. And I just kind of went on with the plans we had for the day. And those plans were to take a pretty good amount of psilocybin and go on an adventure into the rainy forest. Mm. Um, and it was very cold yourself? and rainy. No, with me and my lady and our, and our beautiful pupper. Oh, you took the dog? Took the pupper do. 
So you and uh, we just let her off the leash the entire time, and she was just like, really? Oh, dude, it's lovely. She loves it. <laughs> what did she do? <laughs> oh, that's great sounding. Yeah. That's a great sound. Yeah, that's ASMR right there. Yeah, that's some that's that's some RMSA. That's RSMA. If yeah, I've never heard it before. RMSA. Yeah. RSMI. Yeah. A. A. Rhythm. Material statistics it's awareness. It's the rhythm of the blues when I'm talking next to you. I can do what you want me to. But yeah, um, we uh, tell yeah. me about it, man. Because you know, you get you gave me the space to speak about it, and I know it's there. I mean, well, so even even like going into it, um, I was pretty nervous because I haven't taken this good amount, and it's the same uh, strain that you just did. And so I knew I was going to have an experience because you just had an experience. Um, but it's very, um, I'm starting to learn with psilocybin. It's, you can choose what you need to feel in that moment. Um, and after microdosing it for so long, I've kind of gotten pretty good at controlling the uh, like the side effects of it. So it's like, mm. I wasn't really afraid of it going bad. I was just afraid of how intense it was going to be. Because the last time you and I did a lot, I was really overwhelmed with how beautiful everything was. It was mm. like, it was too beautiful. Like, right. I could not handle it. Yeah. Um, and I remember the, that thing. And then, yeah, the sun <laughs> yeah. is too bright. Well, the greens, greenery is just like, yeah. oh, the greens are like, <clears throat> ow. But then, um, that green. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, he, he doesn't. No, but so I'll just, I'll not just. Not COVID. It wasn't. Um, you went into yours. Um, I think trying to be. Uh, I don't know. I, you went into yours more like psychologically looking for a certain answer to certain things. I don't know. I did not. I, I actually didn't go into it with any of that. I think that that's just a part of the, when we talk about like intention versus expectations is like just a big, there's a big difference here where like your, if your intention is whatever, you know, like what is your intention with these things, right? Mm -hmm. Is to like find truth self to shatter ego, Right. Or is your intention to see beauty in the mm. world, right? Like, I don't know, like all of that is like, and then once you take it, expectations get shattered and it could be good or bad. Mm. Most of the time it's going to be good, right? Because I think that bad is also good. It just, your ego is probably combating some shit and you needed to let, let it go. You know what yeah. I mean? So like, but like from the little bit that we talked about, which was just a bit, I just like, I'm, I, uh, I think like, um, Maybe it's not even your experience that needs to be, it's not even like comparing. It's more of like, have you felt the effects of it lately? I know you got sick, but like, well, no, so it was, it was raining and it was cold, kind of like it is now, really rainy. And you guys went out hiking and in we the went rain. Hiking in a, in a pretty brutal place to hike too, which for five hours. So you would never normally do that. <laughs> no. And so I was already not feeling well. And then once you take the psilocybin, after like you're, once you're peaking, you don't, care if you don't feel well. Right. You know, it's not like, oh, I feel, it's like, I don't, I'm feeling different now. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, so I just didn't really focus on it. And then, yeah, the next day I woke up like really not feeling well. And then on Tuesday I was like, yeah, I'm not getting out of bed today. Yeah. And then Wednesday too, I was really sick. But, um, I, I think it was the cold, I think really flashed my immune system pretty hard. And then I got pretty sick and I'm still recovering. So, so then, but so, um, yeah, go for it. Um, I, what, what I'm what, the reason why I said that is I don't have like this long like story like you, that, you you gave a beautiful story that's just and it was me, so though, beautiful right? and it ended climactic but, it was great no I loved it and yeah. and my story or like my day is just uh, I think every experience is meant to be the way it it happens and uh, mine was just really simple and pure and just the one of the best days that's like legit like. The next day when we woke up, I was like, that was just one of the best days of my mm -hmm. life, honestly. That's the way it felt. And the book that kind of got me into psychedelics was called, a, it's titled A Really Good Day. And I was, ah, oh, dang it. I was going to look up the author so I could quote it, but um, I listened to it on audiobook. And her whole thing was microdosing LSD. And the end of the book, she kind of goes into how what she noticed is every day she microdosed, she just kind of had a really good day. No matter what happened, like the day didn't have to go well, but she just thought of it as a good day. And that's kind of my experience with microdosing too, is even if the day goes bad or I have a lot of anxiety, it still is like, oh, well, it was productive though. I was, productive. I was good today. I can have that, this attitude on it. And that day was just like a really good day in a beautiful different way where it was like legit separating from the stressful reality we call life 
of work grind, which that's what life's been for me for a good handful of months now, which it is for a lot of people, where it's just you're grinding, 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 stress every single day. And it was just pure bliss, man, to disconnect for a little bit and to be okay with it. Um, that's something I really noticed was I was like really fully disconnecting and like integrating with nature and uh, just like so much love. I just felt so much love. And um, like, just, lo like love for yourself or just in general, this feeling of love? Love for that moment. <clears throat> mm. Like really like being really just like, who cares what tomorrow brings, which was sickness and then missing work at my new job mm. and like, like, like bad things, you know, like I just didn't, care and it yeah. wasn't even like it's not even caring it was like i'm so okay with anything that's going to happen because it's going to happen it's like really like i felt like really like centered and um Pre there's, there's a couple yeah very present <laughs> there was a, we were sitting on this bench and uh because it started to get a little overwhelming for my lovely lady and we were um like sitting down and i'm just like dude I, at that moment i was like don't have to be sitting though, but okay, let's sit. And then, and, and like I'm sitting, <laughs> and then we see these people like start walking up, and it's like people are hiking right now. Like it's pouring rain, mm. and we're not the only ones. It, it's freezing. This is not the area where people come out to hike in these area conditions. And uh, normally, a situation like that, uh, I'd be so I get so much social anxiety. Mm. Like people crossing you on a hike, I, I hate, hate and that. You had none. I was more like. <laughs> you think we should ask if they're on mushrooms? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because why would they be out here? You know, that was my thought. Yeah. But it's like, no, 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 no. They're not. They're yeah. not. You just think everyone knows. It's like, no, no, they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but no, um, there, it was it was beautiful, man. And um, like, uh, like every time I've ever done it, uh, you really connect with nature in a beautiful way. And it really separates you from yourself. And I kind of um, Damn right. kept like reminiscing on this point that you said, and yours is what uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter. You are purpose. Mm. It's like you are purpose. Yeah, you don't need to find purpose. You are purpose. Just be. And there was something about that that was just like that's that's the way it really feels. Is um, like just be. Just doesn't matter. It doesn't like you don't need to be amazing. You don't need to do this. You don't need that. You just need to be because you are purpose. Yeah. No matter what happens. You like all I think about right now is like doesn't it like when. Moses is talking to the burning bush. Mm. He's like, what are you? What is your name? And the bush looks back and goes, I am that I am. Mm. Isn't that, isn't that like how you, I like, it sounds like what you're talking about. It's, it's yeah. like, I am purpose. It's like, man, what do I right now in this moment, like in this headspace, which lingers and you can kind of like hold on to, right. Is like maybe when the stress happens and you're like, Oh, that's right. I, I am perp. I am that I am. Mm. I am, I am here now for this, like, you know, all that. And like that feeling is like, so I think that's freedom. Yeah. Just freedom of the cons, all the, the pressures and the stress and the construct, like things against or holding you down. It's like freedom from it all just to be like present in that moment is like extremely happy feeling mm -hmm. and safe feeling. And you can be like out in the cold rain. I remember when you, the next day, I was texting you because I know you were really sick. I'm starting to feel it. And, uh, but you all of a sudden on YouTube, you told me that you were going to maybe make another playlist on our YouTube channel for mm. clips. Mm -hmm. Cause right now we've only had shorts. That is interesting that I did that right after I did that. And then all of a sudden you've been talking about it. And me and Megan were sitting in the living room or family room doing something. I think I was editing the cast and on, I checked out, like opened up YouTube and all of a sudden there was like, new videos that I hadn't seen from those boys and they were like titled a little different and longer. And I was like, Oh, Zach had been, and I like clicked and I like had this moment where I was like, I wonder if Zach's doing work when he's sick. Cause that's not like you. <laughs> right. So like, and then I look and there was like eight new videos of mm -hmm. the clips and I was like, and I clicked one and I was like, Megan, Zach made clips for those boys. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I wonder if like the shrooms, did something. Mm -hmm. And I remember like texting you like, bro, the clips. And you were like, oh yeah, you like them? Or you said something back to me. I remember like, dude, that's so much work. Like, thank you. That's so good. Like, mm -hmm. congratulations. And you were like, work is purpose. Mm -hmm. That's what you texted back to me. You were like, work is purpose, man. I was like, so happy to do it. It was so fun. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's so not your style. When I say not normally, like, that does sound like you. 
mm. that type of energy. Like you just like coming up with a beautiful idea, doing the hard work, putting it up and it hits. And I'm mm. like, you got to have like energy to do that. Like, mm. why would he have energy to do that? And it's like, your first response to me is like, oh, work is purpose. And it's like, oh, it's like, I just heard. I put that on a t-shirt. Work is, work is purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, What's the, uh, I think that's been through time a lot. It sounds very socialist, you know, work is progress. Work is purpose. Work is purpose. Yes. That's going to be like your poster. Yeah. Like a hammer. Isn't that like communism? Come on, Um, And then there was something else that came up that I thought was really funny is you were talking about slug gum. Oh yeah, we so we get we get to like the top of the mountain. What is slug gum? And um, which I think you should release a single called slug gum, which we're going to get to after this. But about your singles, mm, another album yeah. thing coming up. But slug gum sounds like a great. Maybe we could do a track together called slug gum. Could be like a trap track. Mm. Slug gum. Mm. Slug gum. Mm. Yeah, I'll talk to in on the slug gum. No, so we're like on on top of the mountain and. Um, <laughs> completely wipe that off uh we're gonna stop that there um uh and alex reminded me to bring gr- gum she's like I'm, I'm gonna want gum when we get up there i'm like oh great idea and uh just parched no water didn't bring water um and uh we start chewing on the gum or whatever and it's just like so good it's just like the best gum you've ever tasted ever in like about five minutes we're walking back She's like, what I did just it can't. Ta- can you remember what it tasted like? Like mint, was, it was like minty gum. It was mint, but like it clear, just, clear your sinuses, like in the rain. Like it was like cold and wet, and you're like chewing minty flavored gum. Exactly. So you're like a you're like in the like, <sighs> yeah yeah exactly. And all the colors are just like insane. Like and the blue trees. Sparkles. What are those trees that like are like the just like they, they have no like bark on them? There's like the skin. Oh yeah, manzanitas. Yeah, and you just like go up to it, and I just be like, wow. You just put your hand on, it and you're like, what? Do you remind me of <laughs> cock? cock. <laughs> the tree of cock. You find the right size, and you're like, "That's either that that's or a that. baby's leg." Yeah, <laughs> or arm, or arm, or baby yeah. arm, anything about the same size. <laughs> We're chewing this gum, and uh, Alex just goes, "She's like, I can't get it out of my head. It feels like I'm chewing on a slug." And instantly, in my head, he's like, "You're chewing on a slug." And I'm like, "I'm chewing on a slug." <laughs> And I just couldn't, I was like, it's like, Zach, you can just let go of that thought. You can let go of it. And it was like, I couldn't. I was like, okay, I guess we're chewing on slugs now. Oh, God. And so I just like, I was chewing on a slug, but like the slug kept pooping. Oh, like, oh poopy poop mint. mint. Slug poop. And so I had to like let it go. It felt really uncomfortable for a good, good really, yeah. about 10 minutes. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want the gum anymore. Yeah. And then I just forgot about it. But That's what's when you look at your partner and you're like, no, don't ever say stuff What's that scene? It's not Harry Potter when they're like, you eat slugs or something? Like slugs oh, in yeah, your yeah. mouth? Or isn't that Harry Potter? Slugadonum! Or whatever. Yeah, it's like, right. That, I wonder if that's like, she it? brought up. Slugs. Eat slugs! Eat slugs! It's kind of like what she did to you. She was like, honey, eat, eat slugs. slugs. And you're like, no! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> yeah, the psilocybin makes you a wizard. Yeah, you're a wizard, Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> you're a wizard, Zachary. Yeah. Snackery. But it was really interesting because uh, the path didn't make like I didn't really like staying on the path. Mm. Like once I really started to, you know, what's interesting is so wait, you like you're hiking on the path and you like were like I don't I should not be on this trail. Well, no, it was just like there's such beautiful. So you know what's funny is like you're supposed to stay on the path. Every single time you go off of the trail, it's actually like yeah. putting more harm on the environment because of how many like hike. That's why there's trails. Yeah, is to protect the environment around you so yeah. you're supposed to stay on the trails i know but i didn't not to not to like burst that bubble but when you were when you were telling me that i was thinking like i totally know what you mean and ever since i found love with a woman by the name of megan my entire life has changed where i'm like always thinking about these things now where i'm like i should be we don't belong on the trail we should be hiking we're all i mean the, on the dirt path and then like you realize that like you know you're supposed to stay on the trail to protect the environment yeah, but it's also like the entire earth. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Okay, in the comments, I'm gonna let you guys go to town. Go to town, all of y'all. Go to town in the comments. You heard it here, folks. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't fully agree. I mean, I I think if it's a preservation land, then yeah. But uh, walking off the trail here and there, I think is fine. 
So think about it this way. You go I and, understand what you're saying. You do. If everybody did it, it would be bad. Right. But there's actual real issues going on because of like all of this, right? Because there's actual real issues going on. What do you mean? Like no matter whether you stay on the trail or not, there's a lot of people going off trails in many different ways in the planet that are just destroying it. Yeah. So like the idea is like, I think like it's important because these things are, we are already way past like protecting it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like think about like Armstrong woods. You can only hike 10% of what you and I used to hike as kids. Cause it's all cut off. Mm. In like 10 years, they've cut off that whole park. Like Megan took her friend when she was visiting and she was even telling me like some was even cut off from the last time. Mm. Remember when we were in Sedona, Arizona and our grandparents that are no longer with us, RIP, mm-hmm. same one that made that director's cut thing. Mm-hmm. And they took us on those hikes around like Red Rocks yeah. where we'd be able to go on hikes that were not even guided tours, but you'd be able to go inside of the caves that were like made by Native Americans with like... They had old artifacts in there and they were like legitimate, like hundreds of those holes in the mountains where you could see them and then you'd be able to like hike into them. Mm. No one's allowed to go back to there because of all the vandalism and like how much tourism, like, you know what I'm saying? Like just in our lifetime, we were able to do things as kids that Evan will never be able to do. Mm. Think of the Great Barrier Reef, like 65 or 70% of all coral reef on our planet died in 2016. Mm. Like right off the coast of the New York, the Great Barrel Reef there, like so much of it has turned into like white coral and died off due to like the warming, earth warming. Wow. Like that's like one of the be- most beautiful sites ever. And mm. I was thinking like, what if I'm not like, if I don't learn how to like go scuba diving and go check that out, I might miss it. Mm. What if we miss it in like 10 years and you're not going to be able to go see those things because they're all dead? That'd be a shame. So stay on the trails, Zachary. I don't know. I think it's a little different from the coral <sighs> reef. But thanks for that speech, man. I, I, I love how much effort you put into that. I don't know, man. I, just, I love to see you trying here on oh those God. boys. Here on those boys, it's really nice to see Nathaniel try. We haven't ever fought on this cast yet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get back to religious trauma. Environmental trauma is not what this cast so, is about. <laughs> uh, Nathaniel did something really fun, and he went to a hip hop class that the Phoenix dancers yes. um, had a, which is the, uh, the dance team that my lovely lady runs. She's the director. Well, actually I've, I've learned that she doesn't even, cons- she is the one that like spearheads everything or started it, but really she's got a board. She, well, she's got a board of directors. And now there's like, you know, she really believes in like keeping everybody kind of like equal parts in what they have to say and being a part of it because, you know, it's like, having one person as head of anything is dangerous, right? Yeah. So she's such a community member. Like she I just is. love her approach to things and it's blowing up. And Chantel Bogue here, who's actually our graphic designer, is also on the same board for Phoenix Dancers. And on the dance team. Oh, and on the dance team. To oh. oh. Wait, if you didn't hear that, what she said was, it was actually Chantel's idea, which doesn't surprise me to have a board because um, that's why she's our graphic designer. I mean, come on. Mm. Come on. Mm. But Alex is running yeah. Alex is a, Chantel was mentioning how Alex does run things like a CEO though. She really is. And that's like a term we learned from the Gen Z. She mm. is the C, she is a CEO. She's um, got dope fits and CEOs. Anyways, but they had a, a, a little break in this season because they, they do their dance uh, team in seasons. And this season technically was having other dance instructors from not only just this area, but also yeah, Los like Angeles. A lot from Los Angeles, yeah. Um, to come and teach and do different styles of dance. And one of them was a hip-hop class, which Nathaniel here attended. And I didn't even sign up. One of the, I just, Megan, my fiance, who's also part of the board and on the Phoenix Dance team, knows that I'm a dancer. And I, you know, I love dancing. So she asked me in a really, like, sort of, like, nonchalant way, like, would you ever be interested in taking, like, a hip-hop class with me? And I was like, of course. And I was pretty straight about it, you know. Mm. Of course. And then she was like, by the way, it was like a month later. By the way, tomorrow is a hip hop class. I was like, of course. What? No, I, I, have, I have to edit the podcast. <laughs> she was like, babe, come on. You told me you wanted to. I'm like, I just got to show up. got to show up. got to show up. Like I've never done, I've never seen what your girl does or done anything. So I was like, all right, we'll do it. And yeah, man. Showed up, did that shit. We and I made her film my final dance with my other, yeah. you know, the two it's people. A big part of, it. of the dance class. And dude. so, uh, 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, clip to that. Yeah, let's clip right, right to that. here. That was a beautiful take of Nate <laughs> doing some beautiful a- hippity hoppy <laughs> dancing. And he's getting his jiggle on and he's getting his little googie booga 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 booga. And we love to watch it. I was going to say we can take a little break for a second, but I guess we're back. Um, there it is. You there saw it. it. <laughs> you saw it. It's done. Uh, I don't know. I thought I killed it. You did. I, I saw you and I haven't seen your actual video, but I'll see it now. But um, I know I, I sent it to you. Did I? You did. Right, yeah. right afterwards. Because we did, this was like a while ago, a month ago that I did this. In your freestyle, you did a lot of your old moves that you learned way back in the day. Which yeah, is, but those were all moves that I, I learned that night. And so like what you just saw basically was a local dance instructor who had brought a choreographed dance that I'm pretty sure he wrote. And then he trained no matter what style of dance you are normally, if you're ballroom or anything, or if you're first time dancing, or if it's your thousands time dancing, he was teaching a room full of like all these different styles and levels of dancers. And I consider myself a good dancer, but like, I know that I don't dance professionally. Yeah. Right. But like, if I'm going to be at a wedding or if I'm going to be at a prom, which I don't now know. Now you got some be, more moves. I don't know why I'm going to be at a prom. I'm going to be chaperoning my <laughs> sons, maybe. <laughs> and you got to get on the gutter. floor and show God. them how it's done. <laughs> they, people forget I have a 12 year old almost. Um, Wait, you have a 12 year old? He's almost 12. Oh, I know. And soon we're going to be chaperoning at prom. You're going to go with me. We're going to dance. Dude, I'm still going to chaperone. You get me? I'm yeah. letting everyone get yeah. in with drugs. And so that's why I'm a good dancer. And then I show up here and it's like, oh, I forgot that it's like, it's going to be, no, I didn't really forget, but I was like still pleasantly surprised how hard it is when you don't practice all these hip hop dance moves yeah. that are like baseline foundational moves. If you don't know them, you have to, it's like reading a book. You have to like read really fast, comprehend it, practice it, read, comprehend, practice. So the whole time you're doing the dance, you're kind of stressed out because it's like, all right, now one, two, and you're like, wait a minute, dude, we just, <laughs> ah, 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 and you're like, oh my gosh, I look so stupid right yeah. now. And there's always like the person to the left of you. I'm like, hey, just like how many times have you come? It's my first time. And you're like, you're incredible. <laughs> and so Megan's to the left of me and we just had a blast. And like Megan's been doing heels, you know? And so like this is her first time ever taking also hip hop class. And so <sighs> she did great. And, uh, but I gotta be honest, you know, like she can have the heels. I'll take the hip hop. Oh, class, you know what really? I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Really? You heard it here, folks. <clears throat> you heard it here. Megan, you can have the heels, baby. Did you get a video? Of, did class. you get a video of her solo? Video? I did. Yeah. Maybe you should show hers, and we should let the crowd decide. I mean, I'll ask her, and if she says yes, there it was. <laughs> that was loud. Are you yeah. getting angry, dude? No, I'm not angry. <laughs> okay. You saw it. <laughs> saw she it. won't let me show that, so you're just gonna see clap. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, so like right at the very end, then the whole thing is like you're doing it as a group, and then finally, after like so many times of learning all the moves and doing it over and over, you kind of maybe know it. You're gonna do your best. And so then he pairs us into like groups of three or four. And that's what this video is from. Mm. And so it's even more nerve wracking. And everyone on the walls is like filming and screaming. And then yeah. the next crew grows. And the class was about like an hour and 20 minutes. And yeah, it's so supportive, man. So I showed up. 
I actually was super nervous and I love that feeling. It's rare to get nervous. Um, for me, like in life, and I used to get nervous a lot being a stage performer and shows and whatnot. And this podcast has provided a lot of that, you know, to be able to get used to this again. And, but I got really nervous and, uh, and it was like frustrating because I was like, my heart was racing. I was like short of breath, right? And we got started. And I was like, and I got to figure this out because this is, this is a lot of, a lot of work. It was like, why am I so like freaking out? And it was because I'm so rusty and there's a lot of good dancers. And it was mostly, you know, like women, you know, that were in the class. And so it was good. I think like, um, I was really proud of myself by the end of it. And when it was all said and done, I just felt that honestly, I'm going to say this about the Phoenix dancers and all like the things they were doing is from the beginning, first class. And then at the end of the class, it was like, I had nothing but just like appreciation Mm. for people and appreciation for like, I don't know if I'd go do it again if it wasn't, you know, like I might not go again for me, but like the reality was like, I actually felt so much more community and it was like, I probably should do this again Mm. to be around people and to push myself to be this nervous, (laughs) to practice dance for fun, get a filmed video of it and Mm. be like, damn son, you still got the pop and lock. I mean, you do got it. I I feel like that's what I'm saying. And like being able to go through all those emotions and then realize like, why am I like freaking out when it was just fun? Literally so supportive. Yeah. And I love to dance. And I don't know. Like, so all of it's just like, you can go and do that. I know the Phoenix dancers find them on all their social media platforms. You're going to be hearing it more from us. And um, I am going to challenge the Phoenix dancer CEO partner, Zachary. Well, Stone, I'm not going to any classes. Dude. To go to one of these classes. Well, I'm not going to any classes. Well, I challenged you. Well, I'm not doing it. So that's that. Well, looks like you lost the challenge. Yeah, I lost you one. Ding, ding. I'm so happy to be winning a lot of these 2.0 games yeah. and winning the challenges. Okay. Well, that was the first challenge. And do you know what these challenges are? Who's a better partner to their... Okay. Their, so I won. Sure, you won. Who cares? <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> You're supposed to be pissed. You're supposed to want to compete. That's great, man. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a little brother, you know what I'm going through right now. <laughs> you grew up. You're great, man. I'm you, proud, proud you, of you, man. You got great. older. Stop doing shrooms. You're doing great, dude. Proud Psilocybin's making you calm and cool, collected. Very collected, very calm, very cool. Should we go into our next segment? Yeah, we have a new segment coming here on Those Boys. And those Boys have a new segment coming up right now. And that segment is called The Comment Section. <laughs> When you go downtown to the comment section, you might you, find bad comments you didn't want to you read. You didn't want to read that comment in the comment section. section. Beautiful. Thank you. You too. Um, and we actually have a our back of house and only back of house. You can, sure she's developing the website, but as of right now, she is the producer. She is back of house. She massages she is, feet. She massages. She does. She did my nails. She did and my hair. She does a lot more than I, yeah. I realized. Wow. You I just gotta really- ask, dude. She'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. You just gotta ask. You just gotta ask. So we asked her. No, actually, this was one of her ideas. Yes, and it was. So we gotta give credit to Chantel for uh, coming up with this idea because it's awesome. Is um, to, you know, we have had some pretty funny comments given the topics we talk about. I think piss people off or trigger people to wanna make some comments. Mm. And so we went through our TikTok. Not much. We just went through a couple of our videos and we're just, I think it's like cool enough to be able to do this finally is we're almost on episode 30. We're not there yet, but by episode 29, the fact that we're doing an, a little segment on the comment section of our videos, congratulations, Zachary, that we've made it this far. Yes. We actually have haters and fans. Indeed. That are commenting. And one thing I know about haters, they are your fans in denial. That was a shirt you wore for a blast I show once. I, I, was at, I just flashed back <laughs> right there. Yeah. So, so it never ends, right? The haters never end, whether you're haters doing dance music on now. a DJ or you're doing a podcast on religious trauma. Well, I'm really starting to learn that the haters are actually your truest fans. Your truest fans. Because they, they, they don't like your video, mm. but they watch the whole thing. Mm. And most of the time they watch a couple times because they have to comment and the video will keep playing around in the back, background and they'll have to edit their comment, write the mm. one thing, write the case. And mm. then the second they comment, you reply. Uh, and then they're like, what? And they watch it again and again because uh, they're commenting. Yeah, and yeah. you get you like 20 views. So uh, I love the haters. 
And I want you to keep commenting and keep hating. Yeah. And if you could hate a little more, mm. maybe tell your friends about how much you hate us. Yeah. Oh, I get it because we want more fans. Fans. Yes. And also, if you do love us, keep commenting. Too. Yeah. Also comment below. Because I'm sensitive. And I'm getting better at not caring, but... Anyways, Chantel, we're going to bring Zachary's microphone's going to whip on over because <laughs> we don't have enough mics and cameras for all of this. But um, we're just going to go down some comments here and we're going to kind of spitball. Me and Zachary are just going to comment back. Maybe you have a good comment. Maybe your name gets said. Uh, lucky you. Here we go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Welcome, Chantel. Thank you. <laughs> First time in front of a mic. Oh, yeah. Let's it's do weird. it. weird. Too much power. Uh, we're going to start with TikTok. This is from the video, The Trauma of the Rapture. Sway for everyone. Yeah, that's his name. Sway for everyone. I'm assuming it's a he. Okay. Uh, said, ignorant adults preaching to children zero data concepts like astrology, healing, crystals, religion, sage cleansing, etc. is abusive. Mm. We went over these briefly <clears throat> before we started. No, we um, didn't. I've never heard these Sway for life. comments ever. Thank you for the comment. Um, yeah, thank you, Sway for Life, for commenting. Starting it off with, uh, that feels, I don't even know if that's like supportive. I think that they're basically saying that they, they are, the video, if I remember, there's so many shorts, but the whole podcast on the rapture, we were talking about how um, the being raised with this pretty insane idea that when, you know, like, Christians go to heaven with the rapture and everyone else doesn't. So we were like afraid. Yeah. As growing right? up as kids. Growing yeah. up as kids. And this person's agreeing that like, whether it's. Well, we, we, we were, we're assuming they're agreeing. I, when I first yeah, read sad. the comment, I, I was like, if they weren't and they just missed like a few, a word before the start of that comment, they could be saying that we are those ignorant adults mm. preaching this. But um, I don't think that's what they were going for. All right. um, it sounds like they were agreeing. Um, yeah, whether agreeing or not, they're saying that raising kids on any sort of doctrine, right? Any sort of indoctrination that's like, whether it's Christianity, Islam, or any sort of like, you're damned to hell if you don't believe in it, or you're not going to be raptured, you're going to be raptured, is uh, not good. So it's just that one-sided belief mentality. It's it's our way or the highway. There is no other belief. You know what's funny is when we, uh, yeah, the one way or the highway is like black and white, right? It's like where it's negative, but, um, or can be hindering and oppressive. But like when I walked away from the church, you know, I didn't stop finding new culty type things, you know, ritualistic things, you know, like very religious things. And so astrology was one that like, you know, our old graphic designer from Blouse, like kind of really opened up my eyes to like just the fun, engaging part of astrology. And, but for me, like I was, you know, like on my own, I kind of picked things up really easily because it was just like nothing compared to what the church was and what Christianity was. But like, I think the consequences of being raised in that is even if when you're like, I'm done with the church, I'm not a Christian anymore, you're brainwashed into like indoctrinating like your like indoctrination is like kind of like as almost like for the, me, the traits that allowed you to believe in the religion so yeah, deeply so it was like, you kind of keep looking for that in life yeah like it was just like i had to like something just fit right into its place mm -hmm. it wasn't nearly as i was making my own choice right it was like no i'm choosing to like read about other things and so i never once ever said it was like serious but like astrology and numerology and other religion you know, like i read all these eastern religions when I like was getting out of the church and then I read a ton on you, like it was just like, so I thought I wanted to do philosophy and it was just like, I was so stuck in like into the next thing. And then like my anxiety would hit and it'd be like some rituals or this, you know, and like, so I don't know that's like when I hear this comment, I think that like, I totally, totally agree. Like what does a kid need? A kid needs, well, I don't know, I'm not even going to respond to what a kid needs, but I think that like what a kid doesn't need is one way thinking like, mm -hmm. nope, this is the way. And yeah. you're like, but what about these other ways that people live? They're wrong. Yeah. And you're like, oh, and that like affects the brain Yeah. as a kid. And that's what you've been told for like the first 15 years until you can start like kicking back against it, I guess. Definitely. So yeah, sway for life. Sway for we life. sway for, for you. We sway for you. Back to Chantel. Thank you for that. That was a good comment. 
the next comment comes from Coffee Girl. Same video. Coffee Girl. Thank you, Coffee Girl. That's an insanely amazing username. Just going to say that. I know. Like, how do you have... Did, how did you even get that? Do people have usernames, like, with their numbers hidden? Like, you have some usernames, like Coffee Girl 28, Coffee oh. Girl... I think you need she it too. Wow. Congratulations, Day Coffee TikTok. Girl. That's a great name. Uh, she said, the rapture, the antichrist as a man, and the seven years tribulations are all fear dro- doctrines. Mm, so fear doctrines. I have actually never heard that, but um, I wasn't in our re- Calvary Chapel religion. It wasn't taught that way. What do you mean? Um, that it's a fear that it was added to the Bible. Fear doctrine. It, it, it's basically like conspiracy theory or it, it's, it's a theorized version of what the metaphors of Jesus meant, his words meant, the things he said meant. And then. So, I mean, I feel like what she's also like, whether, I mean, I think the, the fun thing about the comment section is we're just, just like people comment on videos and say what random stuff. We're just like going to comment random stuff exactly, back at these yeah. comments. And so I actually, the way I take that is like, I think a lot of indoctr when we're talking about indoctrination, that like you can use fear as a way to indoctrinate mm-hmm. everybody. And so I think what they're saying is like, oh, the rap, what you're taught, your trauma is because of what happens when you use fear as a way to make people believe. Gotcha. Right. That's fear doctrine. Yeah. And that's exactly what you were saying, right? Like those Trump and people, I, mean, I know exactly this video because we're not getting that many comments, but like you had sent me this video and there's somebody even in there that was like, so scared of those trumpets. Mm. I mean, that's the idea is like, there's so much fear, you know, around like indoctrination by fear, mm. you know, it's like pretty much what they're saying. And Definitely. I mean, yeah. Antichrist. And then they're bringing up like the male, you know, like I think they're comment something in there about how the Antichrist being a male, right. Or something. I don't know. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Spitballing. I think they said, uh, they said something about a male, right? Was it, can you read it one more time, Chantel? The rapture of the Antichrist as a man. Yeah, the Antichrist as a man. So, like, they're bringing up, Coffee Girl's bringing up the Antichrist being a man mm-hmm. as being fear doctrine versus, like, the Antichrist being a woman. Well, I remember Dad telling me in Revelations, the Antichrist or the the beast that comes at the end of the times is a beast, like, created by man um, that is like, like n- all knowing an all knowing man. And I'm like, oh, so AI technology. <laughs> cool. Yeah. We're making it. But, um, I don't really know what Coffee Girl's talking about. I was uh, making specific about a man, but I think that what's, what is every, we were just talking about like masculinity, toxic masculinity in the church, the Antichrist being a man. All I take from that comment is like, there's a lot of like male Power, man, power, colonial, everything we've talked about is like, man is scary. Men are scary. It's like, so when you have like a man telling you these things, that's fearful. Yeah. Or well, the, that's or all the, I'll yeah, take from yeah, this. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, so toxic masculinity. It's all through the church. And fear doctrine. Well, next. I'll talk more about that. Next, moving on to the next comment. Thank you, Coffee Girl. Thank you very much, Coffee Girl. Great name. Great name. <coughs> Great name. We're going to swap to YouTube. Oh, yeah, go on over to YouTube. Romy said, don't say daddy tired, please. Thank you. <laughs> that was from episode 22. Well, who was that? What was his name? Romy. 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 Thank you for finally somebody else saying it. Nah, dude. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let, before I have anything to say about this, there's, what they're commenting on is how many times on this cast have you said daddy tired? Well, I, I normally daddy, I even daddy hate, hungry. Oh, see, uh, that's what I normally do. Uh, I hate it. Dude, daddy gets hungry, dude. So, uh, Romy, thank you so much for saying it. I think that if any fan says anything that we should stop doing, we should stop doing it immediately. Starting with this one. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying daddy. Uh, but I'm, I don't say it as much. I used to say it all the time. And when I said it in that clip, uh, it shocked me. I was like, oh, wow, I said it. I haven't said daddy in a long time. So can you can you say where you learned it from at least? Can you give credit? Uh, well, I've, I, I heard Bobby Lee say Bobby Lee, yeah. thank you. Bobby Lee is daddy the original. Daddy Yeah, daddy hungry. And that's why, because Bobby Lee can do it and it's funny. But when Zach does it, it's cringy. Why? Because he's a chubby Asian dude? Oh my, you did not just... Bobby. You're the one that You're the one that put it out there. What? Yeah, it's all you, baby. That's exactly why it's funnier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 
All right, next one. Next comment. Thank you, Romy. <laughs> this one's from Bryce. People don't understand that it's possible to be racist against white people. This video is fucking dumb regardless. <laughs> oh <my> Surprise! <laughs> what the... Oh, I like it. Um... Bryce, your name is as white as it gets, but thank you for the comment. Um, you go off because I'm trying to, I'm a little confused. <laughs> nice, Chantel. I, I love this surprise. Um, can you, can you repeat the comments one more time so I can absorb it? Yeah. People don't understand that it's possible to be racist against white people. Oh. Uh, regardless. Do you know what video that was from? That was Oh, wow. That's people don't realize story. they can be racist against white people. I The hard thing about that comment, the person saying people don't realize that you can be racist about white people. There's so much I would love to say mm. that like if I could be like, we're going to go to our correspondent, Megan Leave House, <laughs> and have her like, you know, like someday we'll be able to maybe do that. But um, what's interesting about a comment like that is – the first, what it makes me think of is this term reverse racism. Is it racism? Mm -hmm. Racism? That was my speech impediment. The last episode, I also said racism is the hardest thing for me to you're say. You're saying it right. You're saying it fine, dude. Is like, if you're born in an extremely oppressive, white, religious church background, then 100% you're going to believe that you can be racist against white people. Mm -hmm. And you're going to learn a term called reverse racism. And you're going to think that when other people of different race treat you a certain way that makes you feel bad, you're going to be like, they're being racist towards me now. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. It is just not true, my friend. It's just not true. And Bryce, I think you should just go read a history book. You know, there was a character on a Netflix show called 13 Reasons Why. And his name was Bryce, too. And the rapist. Yeah. <laughs> white football player yeah. was named Bryce. I guarantee you this Bryce didn't make the football team either. I don't know if he made the football team. Bryce did make the football team. And we don't have anything mean to say about Bryce, but Bryce, you're missing the mark. <laughs> and in the Bible, that's called sin. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, in the Bible, Good response. sin means missing the mark. Yeah. Yeah, so you're sinning right you're now. You're sinning. You're sinning. You're, you're missing sinning. the mark, buddy. You're sinning. Bryce. Thank you for that one, Chantel. Yeah, thank you for the surprise. Do we have yeah. another one? All right, let's get another one. <laughs> Bryce, Bryce, Bryce. This one's from episode 25, CJ Coleman. I think I'm pronouncing that right. CJ Coleman. You should feel that worried about the permanent death and eternal damnation of a conscious soul, especially one you know. One more time. You should feel worried that, sorry, you should feel that worried about the permanent death and eternal damnation of a conscious soul, especially one you know. Mm. I think it's the same one. They're all from the same. Um, mm. Yeah. So this person's saying, because I'm saying in this video, I'm stating uh, how afraid I was growing up as a kid of the rapture and not being taken up. And then he's stating that you should be afraid. They, they are stating um, that they, you should be afraid of the eternal damnation for everyone, you know, that mm. they said. Um, or we could just not believe that and not be afraid of these conspiracy theories. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like if it's like, if you believe that, then it's scary as shit. Yeah. If you don't believe it, then you're not scared of it. Yeah, I'm not scared at all. So if they're like, you should be afraid of the internal damnation of your close friends and family who don't believe in this, it's like, well, if I believed what you believed, I'd be scared like I used to be. And I'd go out there preaching the gospel to everybody, even yeah. the homeless. Yeah. You know, like, hey, here's a piece of bread. Do you need Jesus? You already have Jesus. Why are you here? I'll see you there. You exactly. know, it's like, that was, our, that's what we talked about the last cast, yeah. right? It's like, that's what we did. Yeah. That's why it's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's why it's like, it's probably not real. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it, it's probably not real. Probably not <laughs> real. And guess what? You're free when you stop worrying about damnation. You know, isn't that great? Yeah. Um, and so CJ Coleman, which sounds like a family brand for underwear. Yeah. Thank you for Thank your you. comment. Thank you. We appreciate we, it. We appreciate it. And we appreciate you commenting. Yeah. And, uh, uh, if you are afraid of your family and friends of their damnation, we're sorry. 
And if you keep watching our podcast and keep commenting, we'll probably comment back because we want you to be free yeah. of that damnation, yeah. which uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, CJ. I just don't know, CJ. Yeah. I just but we'll see Jay later. We'll see Jay. CJ later. <laughs> we'll see Jay later. Do you have any more? Are we, are we done? One last one. One last, one. one last comment here from Chantel back of house. Thank you, Chantel, for bringing in the comment section. This one's from Itami Kuro. Ooh. Religion in general is literally a ploy that creates sheep. They all supposedly teach the same lessons. Yet, why are there so many issues? Because sheep will be sheep. Mm. Sheep work is commonly used in, in Bible studies too. And um, to be a sheep for God. I thought the same thing. There's a lot of sheep and shepherd. Yeah. Um, y- y- Jesus is your shepherd, so you shall not. You shall not. Uh, so. What is it? Uh, the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. Right. right. There's it, a lot of claps too. And, and the the consistent metaphor of the one sheep that goes off the mountain, and so the, all the whole herd goes. Well, I think that that's not. Is that a metaphor? I mean, that we. Well, it's true. It, it, we've it, heard if, that before, right? No, it is true. It's a true fact. Sheep will follow one sheep. They all. That's why you can herd sheep. Yeah, they so all I, just follow each I other. I was going to say the same thing. As I feel like I've heard that before. That sheep are like one of the dumbest animals on our planet. All right, the dumbest animals on the planet. I, wouldn't, I, don't, I don't know about dumb is the right word, but they're very not intelligent. That's a, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the idea is that like, I don't know. I've heard of like a story. There was like a farm in Ireland. I don't know where, where like one sheep jumped off a cliff. All the other sheep followed that one sheep. And then it like poisoned the river because so many sheep died what? at the bottom of this cliff where I the river was that. and it poisoned the town. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So like wherever these like, which tales or old stories come from. But the reality is, is that's true, right? Where if one sheep follows another sheep, then all the sheep will follow it. Mm. That's why you need like shepherds and the like sheep dogs to keep the sheep because they'll just get lost and run off and get eaten. Mm. Um, and I don't know. It's like, I just do not, I think that in Christianity, we were raised that humans are like sheep, right? Like we just grew up thinking we're so dumb. That's why we need a shepherd. Mm. Like we're, we're such, we're so stupid. We're just, we're basically monkeys. I just think it's interesting that you would want to live up to being a sheep. What do you mean? Just to follow. It's not everyone's personality trait to be a follower. Right. But I think that that's kind of what works, right? That's it like will, where that, like, that's how you can control a mass amount of people. Yeah, say, yeah. Hey, all you all have to follow the doctrine. You have to. Right, exactly. You have to follow. Be a sheep. Be a sheep. Or you'll die. Or you'll die. Yeah. Forever. Or you'll have you won't survive. You'll just yeah. you won't you won't know what to do. And that's love, baby. Yeah. That's love. That's God's love. Okay, so you're the shepherd. So then who are these people? Are oh, those are the dogs? Those are the sheep dogs. Those yeah. are the ones that keep you safe. Yeah. Oh, this is all connecting and you all believe in the same God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that can be a yeah, I um, I do. I, I just I disagree with the comment was saying like, then why does the same thing keep getting repeated? Because we're all sheep, or whatever that person was saying. Like, saying I just don't believe humanity. I don't think of us as I, th- I think of humans as humans. Period. <laughs> Human beings are humans. They're not other animals. And what do you want to re- you want to restate it? I think she's saying specifically that. Right. I think that that's what I'm going to say is like, I just, I still don't like labeling people in religion as uh, they're saying in the comment, they said that uh, the people that follow these, that keep following into these religions are like sheep. And I think that that is something where like, <laughs> it's sad and scary and real that like you can get swept up in a mind you know, well, and it's also washing, being, if you will, also being raised in it. It's hard to come out of it, right? It's really hard to come out of it. A lot of people stay in it because it's pretty. It would be. It would have been pretty easy to not come out of it. Yeah. In terms of, I wouldn't have had to work this hard. Yeah. To find the reality for myself, but it's really hard to come out of it. And so, uh, the sheep mentality is the easy way out. Yeah. Even in society, the sheep mentality. We were talking about the last podcast. We were a couple podcasts ago. Maybe we were talking about what it means to be a zombie, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And like a zombie in life and how easy that is. And like one of the things is it's like you might see, you know, somebody in life where you're like, wow, look at that person. They look like a zombie. Maybe they're on drugs or maybe they're homeless or maybe they're just different. But you immediately judge and it's like whether it's a sheep or a zombie, it's 
human beings are not far off from one another. I don't mm. even care if you're like a hundred billionaire. You're not that far off from a homeless person. Mm -mm. Okay. We're all human. You're just, and so like that, like idea is like, I judged my entire life people. And now I'm like reaching a place of having, trying to have no judgment at all. And just more like self awareness enough to have like emotional intuition to know what's, probably dangerous and what's not. Mm. Cause I think like what we were talking about earlier is like coming out of the church after being raised in it, like a sheep, literal sheep <laughs> is like all of my twenties were realizing how easy it was for me to be a sheep to everything. Yeah. If somebody on a uh, musician was like, Oh no, I take this supplement. Take I'm it. like, bought it. Yeah. Oh no, I do this, bought it, do this, bought it. It's like, because it's so you're just like, you listen to people that sound worthy. Yeah. And so you don't even have to, you, that's why I think I was saying in the last comment, right? It's like, I broke free from the church and I was a sheep, quote unquote, a sheep to the for world. so long until yeah. I woke up recently. Even though I know all of my twenties, I was waking up a lot in those times I'd wake up and be like, gosh, I'm finally waking up and learning more. And it's like, no, I think we're, I guess every day is another day to be like, I don't want to be like a sheep. I want to like think for myself and be aware of like all of humanity. Mm. I don't know. Totally. Well, I think your life really starts when you choose to, especially when you're raised the way we were, your life really starts when you choose a path of maybe that isn't the truth. Yeah, maybe it's not. Maybe it isn't that. And the people are like, don't never do what ifs, but if you're a Christian and you're raised in the church from birth, start doing what ifs. Yeah. Start doing what ifs and crazy. Just start, start what if. And isn't it crazy that you didn't believe anything else? Like that's, that's what kind of got me to think that maybe it isn't true is that I was just born into this. The odds of that, me being born into a family that knew the truth, yeah. and it's real, all of it's real, yeah. 100%. It's like the odds of that are almost more slim than most things. And there's only one book really on the entire planet that has the outline and resources and history and information that you need to continue for the rest of your life to hand down from generation to generation. Yeah. And no one manipulated it. And no one manipulated it, and it's, perfect and it's the word of God yep. and it should be interpreted correctly. But God didn't write it. It was, it was interpreted through men. We're talking about women. The, we're talking men. about the Bible. Yeah. And I think that that's a great indication of probably what you're going to be hearing over the next few episodes. Mm. Um, this concludes the comment section. This concludes the comment section. This concludes the comment section. If you were listening, you were listening to us responding to comments, either on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube. We don't really mess with Twitter anymore. Very good job. <clears throat> thank you. Um, and uh, we're just going to go. And thank you, Chantel, for that. Yeah, thank you so much for the help, Chantel. Honestly, Chantel. Great voice. Yeah, great voice. So soothing. It was so nice. I was like, I don't have to listen to this man speak anymore. I know. And gender isn't real. We're going to go ahead and <laughs> jump right in to the game cam. Game cam. <laughs> Mongala 3.0. Mongala 3. We are starting the 3.0 series because we need to get more games. Sometimes we're not really thinking much about what games to play, and we have a whole stack on the treadmill, which is funny because it's on the one thing we shouldn't have it on, but Megan's had COVID. We'll take it off soon. We don't think about what game we're going to play until about 20 minutes yeah. before we start this but cast. But we did talk today. I asked Zach because we do a lot of Fortnite and Xbox and video games with my son, and Megan's been playing with us because we have a great time together, <laughs> and we're going to try to probably set up at some point. Mm -hmm. You heard it here, folks. Episode 29. We're going to start another channel on Twitch called Those Boys Streaming Live. Well, it's actually already created. I created it. Oh, you already created it. But we're going to start building it out so that me and Zach can start doing video game stuff together on this podcast yep. with our video game systems. Yep. Whether it's Mario Kart here in the studio or something we're playing at home. Yeah. I think it'd be a lot, a lot of fun. I think it'd be fun too. And it kind of opens the door for us to do like more of like practice with the live streaming that you're really good at because yeah. you had a lot of experience. Well, I used to be good at it. Yeah. And I used to have the computer for it. Something happened. I think I got a virus, dude. Yeah. It's called the sun flare. There was a major, major solar flares where the Something polarities of the sun. No, listen to me right now. Okay. Okay. The polarities of the sun flipped. Right. And we got massive solar flares. It happens about every 10 years. Right. And that's why our microwave burnt up. That's right. why there was electric fires from patients that I was helping. Right. And that's why your computer. Right. And that's why you had issues. Right. 
Her shit's fine. Don't Chantel's shit's not fine. It's, it's her All sh- of her shit burned up. Her shit's not fine. Um, Moncala 3.0. And I at this point, I can't remember. Do you remember who won the last? I won you've the won first. Bo- you won both of them. <laughs> get started you know this cast has changed quite a bit since Nate started winning the 2.0s because i won almost every 1.0 and you've won almost every isn't 2.0. that crazy what happens when i'm, ner- when I'm nervous I, I don't do as well i have to make sure this oh is so you're not nervous anymore doesn't it need to go this way all right winner goes and before we jump into it, if you're <laughs> hearing the music in the background and you've made it this far, thank you. Thank and And um, it's those boys' game tracks provided to you by Nene, myself. Mm. And um, we've got almost 19 tracks in that folder. Holy but Jesus. Mm-hmm. I haven't put that many songs out on anything in the internet ever. And there was a song we put on the last episode. The title of it was called Dinner Time. You can go back right now, pause this, go listen to it if you want. And Zach... Um, has uh, been considering maybe taking one of those tracks where we can do a track together because these are old songs mm. and uh, you had mentioned that maybe you want to do a track together with that. So. Yeah, maybe. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, uh, let's get back to it. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, there's five pieces here. I need to be three. Okay. All right, Moncala 3.0. If you don't know the rules, get... Get a Google. Yeah, get Shout a... GPT. Get a life. Of course you're going to go straight there. Duh, I'm going to go there. Of course you're going to straight there. Because I get to go again. Of course you're going to want to go again. Duh, I'm going to go there. Because I don't want you to take any of my pieces. Your turn. So don't you pick up that one and keep going? No, no, no. You only pick up the ones on the other side when you get to an empty one. Right. Oh, we have to teach Zach even though it's 3.0. What game are we playing right now? Shut your mouth. <laughs> Moncala? I think it's Moncala, yeah, Moncala. Oh. 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 Something's not right. I really hope this is this is correct. This is how we've played every time since. Oh yeah, because you have nothing there, so you can't do that anymore. Zachary. Yep. What are you going to do though? Nothing, man. Nothing. I got nothing. But you know nothing. what? We're going to go around the pocket here. Nathan's going to go around the pocket here. Around the river bend. You're up. Yeah, two. Go on. Yep. Right now, Zach's in the lead. Four to two. Go ahead, Zach. Go again. Now, oh, yeah. Fill me up, buddy. We got four there. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a good one. Uh, 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 uh. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, <laughs> okay, Butterfingers. Wow, that's a pile right there. That is a pile. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Zach is ahead of one. Easy, easy, drop it in slightly, slightly. Good drop. Oh, looks like it's my turn again. Mm, not many moves this time. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> He's going for the big answer, but I'm, I mean, I, it makes me anxious having to keep balancing it, so I'm glad you picked it up. I'm sorry that you're having anxiety. I'm not really having anxiety. I'm just living with anxiety on a daily basis. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh, go again. That is what a gorgeous. <coughs> then you're going to take my big one. Nice. Taking all the points, baby. Moncal 3.0. I know. There's not really a strategy, <laughs> or is there? I don't know. I don't play it enough anymore. I used to have a strategy when I was a kid. There you go, buddy. <sighs> one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, well... I don't really have many moves there. I understand. Still don't have many moves. There you here. go. You got that one. Yeah, you picked that one up. There you go, big boy. There you go, big boy. Make some money. Oh, easy. Easy, easy. Easy, 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 easy. Yeah. 
Nathan's having a hard, 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 tough time choosing. Nathan's having a tough time choosing. Nice. Okay. We'll move there. We'll move there. We'll move down here. Nobody. Uh, bum, bum, ba, da, da, da. Once again, if you've made it this far and you're just listening to the podcast, <coughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you for just listening to us. You, you, congratulations for being. If you actually that. made it this far, listening and not watching the cast, but listening, yeah. you have to comment on the podcasting app or whatever you're listening to, and Please. let us know that you're still listening to, to that would the just games. Be amazing. I I just don't believe it's true, and so you would be proving me wrong. It'd be great. Oh, and he takes the big one. I did. One of our friends just started listening to the cast. Good friends from the past. And she told me, she was like, the games, <laughs> those are just silly. It's because she <laughs> just listens. Well, no, she's always like, I, I see you haven't really got the hang of those yet. I'm like, well, it's supposed to be kind of a separation. Oh, that's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and that's the whole point. <laughs> that's the whole point. We don't, we don't got it yet. We want to do something different. Except for this morning call is Nathan's cheating. <laughs> I just kicked you. you. You have a chance. You could bring this back. I don't really have much of a chance, dude. I think you're lying. Maybe sinus infections getting in the way. It, it's making me feel very confused. It is cold out here, and we're almost done. We're almost done, everybody. If you're still here, here we go. Three, here we go. So one, two, three, and ten. Here we go. Seven, 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 seven. This one, two, three. And oh goodness, gracious! Go. Then you got the two. Oh, oh my goodness, this is just gross, dude. <laughs> I know. This I'm is sorry, just man. gross. Yeah, you're gonna want to do the big one. You want to give me all of them? Yeah, that's right. Come on over. I don't know what else I'm supposed to I know, do. But I know. We got the one, two, one, two. <laughs> Dude, this is the one, worst one yet. One, two, Why am I so bad at this game? Oh. I'm just going to give them all to you. I can't oh, do it Oh, no. Oh, no. This is it. This is how it goes right here. Yeah. Oh, dude, you're not going to even be able to get them all in. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so wealthy. I hate this game. I've never beat you once or even close to it. I don't think we're playing it right. Oh, snap. I just, I just ruined it. Those are yours. Okay. You can finish now. <laughs> Come on. Whoa. One. Whoa. 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 This Come reminds on. me of the little bulls at the skate park. You beat me. I don't have to count them. Hey. I'm not going to lie. It was such a slaughter. I'm so done with Moncala. 3.0. I'm so done, dude. It's anticlimactic. It's, it's not fun. even fun. Three out of three. <sighs> yeah, you won that one, man. You, you claim Moncala. I'm not even going to fight you over it. Thank you. Um, thank you, honey. I'm taking home that trophy tonight. You're taking home that Moncala trophy. I'm taking home that Moncala trophy. Should I just throw one as hard as I can and make it explode like the good old days? No. Okay, because we've grown up. Did you used to do that? Remember the first one? I like threw it down. I was like, here we go. Here we go. And I threw it and oh, I was yeah. like, yeah. That was a way more epic game. It made more sense. This was already, I knew I was going to lose where I only started. Oh, that's why you lost intent. Well, no, I just don't get this game. Um, we're going to wrap it up because I love you. And even though I smashed Uncle Zach here on Moncala 3.0, um, if you're listening to those boys, then you're probably aware that Signs is here live in-house. Every single episode, Signs mm -hmm. is Zachary's mm -hmm. musical project, mm -hmm. his hip-hop, rap, R&B, um, alternate personality. And he's been putting out a single every single month this year as one of his New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. And he's been following up with it, Chantel designing all of his artwork as well. So there's so much going on. I'm very proud of the both of you. And Zach, I'm extremely proud of you. Thank Tell you. us about it. What's coming out soon? Um, when this podcast is released on March 10th, there will be a new song titled The Real One coming out March 10th. So go uh, stream it. And let me know what you think. Real yeah. one, March 10th. Yeah, comment Science. on it. We might talk about it on the cast. We might talk about it on the cast. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. It is It is getting tougher to, um, uh, with how busy I've been, continue to keep making music. I know. Um, it's going to get harder, man. Um, but uh, it pushed me really hard and I popped out another new one. And so I'm <sighs> getting excited about it. Love the way you talk. Mm. That was sensual, by the yeah, way. Thanks. You know, you just did a little. Yeah. We're out. Yeah, we're out. Uh, you heard it here, folks. Science, March 10th. Real one. Mm. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful week. We will see you shortly, shortly. for episode 30. Episode 30. And thank you, Chantel. Go get warm. Um, much love, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love you.